Good afternoon, wonderful nerd community, and welcome back to the Mile High City. We're here in Denver, Colorado. It is day two of Boomy World 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson here, joined by John Furrier on the Cube. John, welcome to the show. Great to be here, um, kicking off the keynote review, as we always do in the Cube. We analyze what Boomy's doing. Boomy World is actually their event for Boomy, a company that has been around the block in iPaaS. Uh, application integration, which by the way is never going away, but you know, they had that relationship with Dell, they spun back out. This company is really poised, Savannah, for potentially kind of becoming the like next service now like company where their presence in the enterprise is pretty significant. They have a huge loyal base of customers. Yeah, 20,000, um, over 20,000 customers. And their customers have that loyalty to them. So, you know, I like Boomi, I've always loved this company, um, love the people who work there, they're smart, and they're working on, on application stuff, which by the way never goes away. And if you look at the Gen AI, movement now, it's all about the next gen applications, which are either being retrofitted and or repurposed or refactored to net new applications being built in the open source development community. So very robust demand from developers for gen AI stuff. So yeah, Boomi's well positioned because they have that installed base workflow and data access. So yeah, Boomi has the keys to the kingdom. They have the access to the jewels of all the top enterprises and they're in a good position to make make that work. It's a, it's a really unique position to be in. I mean, 20,000 customers, 800 partners, being at the epicenter of the integration game, I say this lovingly, isn't always the most thrilling. When you're in the middle of a huge technological evolution like we're going into with AI, it's actually a really prime spot to be. Yeah, and, and they have an opportunity, and what's clear, they're making moves, and what, why I'm psyched that we're here and as a cube is, you know, we do whatever it takes to get the, get the stories. Boomi's making moves. A lot of M&A activity that bought API, IDA company, Federated API Management, Mash Reboot, which is now part of Tibco, that whole private equity uh, cloud group. Uh, they did an OEM deal with um, AI, which is a, a, um, a FinTalk application. Yeah. And then they have the organic innovation, which is on the products I will hear from them. But the key news here is they're launching the new vision around the Boomi Enterprise Platform. Um, that's around the next gen API management service with the acquisition. They put a stake in the ground there. Um, they got the uh, AI agent framework. They, they launched on stage and showed their Boomi GPT, which was launched last year, showing that agents, not just conversational AI, will that's be a the big be part the, of what they're the talking about. Game. Yep. And finally, the trusted data management piece. So what they're doing is actually pretty smart. They're threading all the key elements together. You got to have good governance. They're nailing that with the data management and the agent framework tied in there. And the API management is critical because 80% of all traffic is run through APIs, if you think about it. And it might even be more than that, but that's basically the internet. Yeah. So yeah, everything, I mean, yes, it every is. Every LLM will have an API yeah, yeah. component too. So as LLMs and foundation models come in, Lingua Franca for AI will be integrated through LLMs, securing those, managing them, automating them. It's going to be the end game here for Boomi. I see them. That's right down the road, but it's close. Yes, as, as Steve Lucas, their CEO, says frequently, the future is three A's, AI, APIs, and automation. And I think that Boomi really touched on those. We also had a chance to talk to Michael, who is one of the leaders on their emerging tech research team last night. And, and it was really interesting, too, because I think there's, you know, we do a lot of shows. There's a lot of conversations about artificial intelligence. One of the things that I liked about last night, even when we were talking today, is about practical AI and about real AI. And there's a lot of passion here for folks to actually make that AI real and deliver value both for the human experience as well as for the traditional value experience in terms of ROI and business. And and Boomi has kind of a unique community energy around that. I think their culture of collaboration is actually, it's remarkable. It's an intimate but extremely well-knit group here. Yeah, companies like Boomi um, that have access to automation and have been doing that for a while with, with iPaaS, the, the integrated platform as a service and auto automation, really kind of extends that application out, which changes the game on a couple of things we're going to see come out of this. And we've been talking about at other events, certainly at uh, CNCF events uh, and other, other cloud events. The observability space has really been turned upside yes, down. Yes, it has. Because now you need all that telemetry application observability. But now that you have generative AI, the applications of tsunamis coming again. And so that means every app might have actually different observability. So you can't just apply general purpose observability products to essentially an omni app market where it's like massive millions of applications potentially. So you're going to have to have that programmable. And so what Gen AI is going to probably do here is you got to take that iPass evolution and bring it into the app world. That's going to where observability will change and then governance 
If you don't mm -hmm. nail the governance right now, you will not have AI because governance is the key to the kingdom because applications need all the data available. And fluidly available. In real time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, exactly. You gotta do the governance up front and let it fly. Yeah. Have it built in from day one. That's gonna be the data model. And by the way, whoever does that will win the control plane for data, will win the semantic layer, and will be the key player in the AI game. We talked about that with our systems last night when we were doing our sideline reporting at the at the, at the reception, and and I think it's a really good point. It it is that it's that data fluidity. It's it's not just you know we, we always talk about getting data out of silos. Obviously, Boomi, one of the companies that that integrates all the existing systems within a business within an enterprise. But I do think that there's going to need to be that that easy access, not just so that folks can use AI to access all this different data, but also as we were talking about with Steve on that last segment, to be able to self-heal and to be able to forecast and predict when things might be going to go awry or to prevent anything negative or costly from happening. It's all about that continued it, um, optimization. It's interesting, in the keynote, we both were kind of watching it and, and um, Steve, Lucas has got a great personality. It shines on stage. He's, he's clever, he's snarky at the same time, but in a good way. Um, and then Anne was on stage as well, giving the Asian demo. Yeah. And I like that interchange, but I like some of the words she said. She says, boomy minions are there working for you. She actually used the term minions. And the whole agent thing really is compelling because now you have specialists working on your behalf. So where Boomi's really taking the agent model is really making it a about getting the, uh, the data right and getting the results. So the agents aren't just like a chat bot. They're thinking more, much differently. Yeah. Um, automation around that. And then Boomi GPT, was trained over millions of model integrations. And, and then the number that I saw online, I'm gonna vet, validate this, was 300 million was mentioned. Mm -hmm. 300 million, um, 300 uh, million models have been looked at. So if you look at the integration world, back to our other point, Savannah, you've been at-, at That's uh, wild. I can't even know, wrap my head around that at, number. At KubeCon, you guys, I know you and Rob yeah. are talking about this automation game. Look, look at, once you learn everything, oh, oh, it's the automation will just kick in. So I think this is where the action will be. Uh, we're going to watch it. It's still going to unfold in front yeah. of our eyes. So uh, again, booming, well positioned. The other thing is I liked, I love, I love the platform play. I think the API management um, play is a good one. Highly competitive Savannah mm -hmm. market. Um, you got massive competition in there. You got, you got Kong in there. You got a bunch of players in there. Very, very competitive um, market. And so, it's going to be really interesting see how they to do see. On that one. Yeah, you know, Boomi's grown fast, half a billion dollars in rev last year. Really curious to see what we're talking about this time next year as yeah. some more customers have had the opportunity. Although we do get to talk to quite a few of those examples here well, I think this the, I week. Well, I think the conversation was going to be, did the M&A work, right? So the, the, the big story here, obviously, besides having good product positioning, uh, positioning the market for, for AI with the integration and automation, is that will the M&A work? Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big tell sign. Will the API management piece play out and how well their governments does? And does it stick within the Boomi ecosystem or do they increase their total addressable market or TAM by having these net new capabilities? So to me, if, if that's the ServiceNow opportunity, I call it like what ServiceNow was. Yeah, I think when that's they a great analogy. It's like very small, very yeah. loyal audience. It's a great analogy. Boom. Yeah, I think, I think it really makes it. It's an interesting, <clears throat> you know, one of the other uh, themes in Boomi's vision as well as even recording the keynote. So, uh, you know, one of their taglines is be bold, be you, be Boomi. And we had Dion Sanders in there today, a legend from our era, giving a chat about, about dreaming big and about really going for it. And I, I thought it was an interesting or at least notable angle because we're not at a sales kickoff. We're not in an environment where you're thinking, oh yeah, go dream big, go sell, go do whatever. This is, this is a very different environment. This is about collaboration. This is about really helping build the future and, 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 and making sure the legacy systems and data come along with us as we, as we morph into that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be really curious to see what sort of projects are realized when we've had a little bit more time with some of the announcements that Boomi has made. I mean, well, if you look at the, I mean, they already have a big opportunity. If you look at the global integrated platform as a service market, or iPads as it's called, um, our stats on the research side showing that that compound annual growth rate is going to be close to 35% through 2030. So for the next six years, just the iPads market is growing significantly. 
That's not including the Gen AI new category of opportunities that are going to emerge around generative AI, which yep. they highlight on stage. So, yeah, to me, Boomi has an opportunity to kind of break out of its own little shell here um, of their great customers that they have, very loyal customer base with the iPads, and turn iPads into not about just a small category, make the category bigger by, and this is why the API management plays huge, because yeah. if they nail that, oh, yeah. they essentially are, 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 are vendor agnostic API management, with the governance, they could be the, the central point of enabling the, the application growth. So that would increase their TAM significantly. That would change the economics outlook for the company. So to me, I see that dot connecting potentially. We'll see, and again, next year we'll see. Does that dot connect? Do they stay in the IFAS market and ride that puppy uh, a little bit longer? Or do they just still ride that wave and just extend the TAM? So I think it's from Steve's yeah. perspective, he's got a clear vision that JDI is a unique generational opportunity. I uh, heard him speaking with you privately about that on theCUBE, mm -hmm. and I think he's right. I think the modern AI infrastructure is going to need to accelerate through APIs, and every large language model or foundation model will have some API management to it, some security is going to be needed in there, you have inside the app and also the apparatus of the LLMs and whatnot. So it's just a huge opportunity. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was interesting that Steve. I brought up, and I think a few other people think this, but he said we're going to have the most productive decade that we've ever had. Yeah. And and most uh, executives, actually, Boomi did a discovery report recently, they did some independent research, and uh, that one of the core global drivers of AI adoption, actually number one, was increased productivity. So, and I mean, that's obviously <laughs> what we're seeing in this phase. I'm not surprised that that affirmed that. Well, it brings up the whole job thing. I mean, I was, on, yeah. so I was on LinkedIn last night, you know, kind of in a snarky mood, and I saw someone from Databricks that just stepped down in a big, large marketing position, and this person's been a legend and B2B marketing, so he's been around. So he's taking some time off, and deservedly so. He built Databricks up to be great, uh, great marketing department. I was, I said a comment, a snarky comment on his LinkedIn, like, did AI replace your job? Mm -hmm. And Steve on stage today said that a lot of these automations will replace a lot of the marketing automation. So, you know, marketing is one of those areas that we're going to see Gen AI impact first. You know, a tongue in cheek, he didn't really get replaced, but the point is, is that oh, think that's the conversation. What jobs are going to be replaced and automated away, and then what does that shift go to? So productivity kicks in. Is that more creativity? Is that going to be more problem solving? And again, that changes the skills gap conversation and then gives opportunity for new entrants to come in, whether it's you know, creating an opportunity for people to come in and level up that might not have had that job opportunity before. So you got access to democratization of new jobs for people that don't have pedigree. They can come right in and join in. So I think the whole job thing is going to be a net positive. I do too. I think a lot of the quad <laughs> work gets, goes away, but like. Yeah. I think it comes down to, I mean, we talk, uh, you know, a lot of the events we go to, we talk about developer productivity. Only 25%, 27%, depending on what you look at, of a developer's time is spent creating. And so I think we're going to have, you know, the rest of it's maintaining or fixing problems or managing or whatever else. And the, so I think in theory, with, with some of this automation and with, with things getting taken care of, thanks to our new little AI agent friends, I think we'll have more time for creativity and for innovation and for... Well, let me ask you a question, because you know, we've been doing a lot of CUBE action. Again, we've been in the cloud native developer side for a long time, digging in there, and you just recently came back from Paris at KubeCon, mm -hmm. CNCF, and so as you look at the developer landscape, cloud native, they're going, they're right into cloud native with generative AI. Yeah. How do you see that evolving? What, what was your takeaway of one, Boomi's keynote, and then how that plays against the Gen AI movement within the cloud native world. Did Boomi hit all the right notes? Was there any gaps there, Savannah? What did you that's see? That's a really good question. What did you uh, see? Yeah, I think that's an outstanding question. I think that a lot of, I think that Boomi and a lot of their partners here are used to evolving legacy systems and core systems. And I think that that is something, there, there's similar ethos in that. I mean, there's there's this private enterprise side of things that certainly wasn't as open source heavy as we're at when we're having a conversation with the Cloud Data Foundation. But I think that I, I I think that they hit I miss. some of the notes. I don't know that it was actually as community heavy as as it could have been from a what are we building together. But that said, I think from a partner ecosystem perspective, from a from a private ecosystem perspective, there's a lot of a similar a lot of similar narrative happening there. But uh, yeah, this puts them right in the API space. Puts them right in the crosshairs of where yeah. we've been kind of seeing the cloud native converging in. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember, two years ago we were in um, Amsterdam. Gen AI just launched, but all the talks were in. There was no talks on AI at that point. We were doing it on the queue, and so just go back, look at where, are, where we are yeah. now. I see the whole world vectoring right into this whole. Who's going to control how, control the data? 
was going to give the observability. Totally. And I think we're at a point where we're starting to see that that it's not just a conversation. It, it's 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 already here. You know, half of over half of companies are are integrating or leveraging Gen AI to integrate their data and to do stuff, or at least trying to come up with that strategy right now. So I mean, I think it's it's happening. Yeah, I love Boom. Some of the other things in the keynote jumped out. I mean, just to uh, play on words, they said we're going to create a data reservoir. They didn't say data lake, which I like because that's been over, in my opinion, been overused. Well, you know, it's kind of a standard term. Yeah, but data it reservoir. Time. They used the she pronoun in describing the Boomi platform. I don't know if you noticed. Is she a girl? I was. I was going to say. So I, I, they talked about. That's uh, fun. She's going to go get a query. So that was that was a, a interesting uh, pronoun there. I thought that was good. I love the agent garden um, demos where you go in. And yeah. It was very easy. Boomi's been very strong on user experience. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking to um, uh, on LinkedIn with the Amazon people. They just launched the Bedrock thing. It's just so hard to use the console. It's just like it feels so like like okay, uh, too many like buttons to click. The Boomi had a nice interface. You go to the model guards, you can drop in and inter integrate nicely with those agents from third parties. I thought that was clever. So I think they're in a right spot. They, the question is, can they vector into the new growth market? Mm -hmm. That's going to be, Savannah, the, the, the thing we're going to ask and get at this week is, what's that growth prospect look like for Boomi yeah. with the generator and do these products organically with the M&A work? Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear from all of our fantastic guests this week and to, to enjoy this experience. It's my first Boomi World. I have to say it's been pretty lovely. Uh, last night, just random shout out to their event marketing team, set a new personal record for me here. I think it was the best conference dinner I've ever had in terms of the general food. We had prime yeah. rib, yeah. we had branzino, we had a, a massive cheese spread. It was actually quite yeah. quite lovely. So Boomi, you know, you can see why the community really cares. And and I want to shout out to Boomi as well because the Cube is executing, phasing in our new sideline reporter yeah. content yeah. where we was very try to get a perspective off camera. You did that. Mm -hmm. You did what six segments. We did four last night. Yeah, it was great. Do a little rotisserie, talk mm -hmm. to some partners. Tell us a little bit about the the uh, the Savannah on the street vibe, sideline reporter. I mean, they are the players. What, what was the vibe like and how did it go? Well, one of the things that, you know, I'm really passionate about as a community focused person is, is really immersing people in an experience, even if they can't be here. It's why we do our swag segment. It's why we talk about the food. It's why we, we talk about the environment that we're in outside of the convention center. We had a great time. We talked to one of Boomi's sales leaders, Drew, who is absolutely lovely. He's from Omaha. We got to chat both about the tech scene and the AI scene in Omaha, which I personally hadn't thought yeah. a lot about. Yeah. And also- Where Warren Buffett lives, by the way. Yes. Well, I mean, there are some interesting <laughs> folks in, in Omaha. I've driven through Omaha, congratulations to them for doing that. Uh, it's not exactly where I want to be personally living, but that said, maybe I haven't seen the cool stuff. Uh, but I but I like it because he's here he is leading this, this big software company. He talked a lot about the collaboration and the cool partnerships that they have here and how special the community is. Yeah. It was a real big emphasis on community. It was also fun to talk about Omaha. I think it was cool. Drew, I'm not trying to bag Omaha, just to be very clear. <laughs> then we also we also had the chance to talk to two different Boomi partners. We talked to Open Legacy as well as our systems, who's our neighbor right over here. Natash was just an absolute joy to have on the show. We talked about everything from how AI is going to make our cooking better and and the types of recipes that he likes to make for his family to a lot of the challenges and things that they're seeing across industries as they help companies evolve. And uh, and Open Legacy was really fabulous as well. We had Zev just an. Uh, it, ball of insight. He's been in the industry for a super long time and was able to give the lay of the land and talk about why partnering with Boomi is so key. And then last but not least, we had Michael, who's one of the leaders of their AI team, and it was over in front of their activations over there. He's got a bow tie collection. Lots yeah. of reasons to check those interviews yeah. out. They'll be airing throughout the course of the day here with our live I just beverage. love, Savannah, the vibe that brings the stories to life. Yeah. And Me highlights too. the people who are making it. those stories, who are participating in those stories, and bringing that to the cube is a different new vibe, which is totally everyone loves. So uh, we'll, we'll get to continue to figure out how to make that completely more broader yes. and bigger. We hope other companies yeah. are inspired by that silent uh, story reporting for it. People want more storytelling. We would love to do your storytelling. Well, John, I can't wait to spend the rest yeah. of the show with you. It's yeah. fantastic. Same. And thank all of you for tuning in to theCUBE's wonderful three days of coverage here at Boomi World 2024 in Denver, Colorado. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.